morning children so now first of all take one rough book a pen pencil a eraser and open your textbook today i am going to start the next lesson the second chapter that is cell the basic unit of life in this lesson you will be having many diagrams you have to practice the diagram so open your rough book hold the pencil and eraser so now come to your lesson second lesson the cell so second lesson cell the basic unit of life in this class you are going to learn what is a cell what it will do in our life and how our life proceeds so first this is our earth so you can see many plants flowers water next one the birds and the some of the insects whatever it may be our earth is a beautiful place with many living organisms like from the small plants to the big plants and from small microscopic organism that is bacteria to the huge animal that is whale all these organisms are present on this earth so when you come to these organisms how they are able to do their function now here he is a person whose name is antony van leeuwen hoek so this person is the first person to see the micro organisms in 1674 and this microscope first it was it was invented around 350 years ago the first microscope was invented around 350 years ago at that time many people started observing the organisms but they have neglected the micro organism they didn't concentrate on the microscopic organism which are not visible to our eye so he is the first person to observe the microscopic organisms by using the microscope antony van leeuwen hoek in 1674 is the first human to see the living bodies what are the microscopic organisms when you come to the micro organisms like bacteria yeast protozoa rbc and some of the teeming life in the water he observed the saliva and he observed in the saliva he observed the micro organism what are the micro organisms in the water what are the different micro organisms so he is the first person to explain the microscopic organism which are present on the earth and as well as surrounding to our body so the now come to the next person he is uh, robert hook so these all organisms will perform their function with uh, a, a cell so he is the first person to explain about the cell this man he framed his own microscope which is known as robert hook microscope he is the first person to observe the cell in the living organism that is in the plants so in the, this robert hook he observed the cell in 1665 under his own magnifying glass what he has taken as a, a specimen means he has taken the cork what is a cork that is nothing but a, a wood part of the plant so this person first he observed the cork cells in the plant so you can see these cork cells how they are they are hello and having a line surrounding to the cell so this robert hook first he called it as a small cavities so this cavities what do you mean by cavities these cavities he has named as the cell what is a cell cell is a latin word which gives the meaning little room which gives the meaning little room so the robert hook he said the cell as the cavity is completely open here you can find a hollow region so this is called as the little room and it was named as the cell and cell is a latin word which is given by the robert hook 
Now, if you want to observe the cells, now we cannot get the cock. So what, how can you observe the cell means you can take the mastic. Mastic is also similar to the cock. So take the mastic, one mastic and can a bowl, place the mastic and pour little water. And soak it for 15 minutes or for half an hour. After half an hour, remove the mastic. Now, for doing the experiment, what are the materials required? One mastic. Water, glass light, cover slip, microscope. Matchstick, water, glass light, cover slip, microscope. Now already you have saved, soaked the matchstick in the water. Now take a, a thin piece of this matchstick. Cut it a, a thin slice and place it on the magnifying glass. Place it, place it on the glass light and add water and cover with the cover slip now observe under the microscope when you observe under the microscope you can find the structure like this an empty space inside the cell and numerous cells without any matter inside the cell why it is not showing any part inside the cell means it is a completely a dead tissue it is completely a dead tissue so instead of observing the cork in our school, we can observe the mastic. This mastic also will show the cells. Now, come to the second activity. So, that is a dead tissue. If you want to observe the, a living tissue, how we can perform an experiment? Here, this is the activity 2. Observing an onion peel. Onion is a living substance, a living thing. So, what are the materials required to observe the onion peel? So, first one is the onion peel. What is meant by a peel? Peel means nothing but when you open the onion layers inside, you can find a, a thin translucent layer. That layer you have to take it. Take cut a small piece and place it on the glass slide. Then add a drop of water, cover with the cover sleeve and observe under the microscope. When you observe under the microscope, you can find the structure like this. So this is a living cell. So you can find the cytoplasm, a fluid-like structure, a dark dotted structure which is called nucleus and a, a borderline structure which is called cell wall. And inside you can find here to the nucleus an empty space which is called vacuum. So these are the parts which you can find in a, a living cell. Now, if you take in the animals, in the animals how can you identify a living cell? How are the parts you can find in a living cell? So for this best and easy method is taking the human cheek cells. So before taking the cheek cell, just you wash your mouth with the water neatly then take one toothpick here once you see the materials required toothpick cheek cells glass line cover slip water microscope now after cleaning your mouth take one toothpick open your mouth and scrap a little tissue from your inner lining of your cheek cells now place the cheek cells on the glass slide uniformly now add a drop of water and cover with the cover slip observe under the microscope here you see this is the structure so if you see the structure under the microscope you can find the parts like this one is the cytoplasm and this is the nucleus and this is the cell membrane so here, once you see the cells in the onion peel, the wall of the cell is little bit thicker when compared with the wall of the cells in the human cheek cell. Why? What is the reason? Reason is nothing but the plants will have an extra layer above the cell membrane that is called cell wall. Because of the presence of cell wall, the onion peel cell will outer layer will look thicker when compared with the human cheek cells. So to observe the cells, we have to use the microscope. Now 
when you come to the cell you have seen in the dead tissue that is the cork tissue the cells are present and in the living tissue that is the plant cell and the as well as the human sheath cells so when you compare these three diagrams the dead cell tissue doesn't have any internal structures but the living cells are having the uh, internal structures which are visible very clearly now see the worksheet today you have to draw the onion peel cell and as well as the cheek cells two times in your rough book these two diagrams are very very important you will be getting in your the exam so now itself i have shown for you the nucleus and the cell which are present in the cork and as well as in the onion peel and the cheek cells so if you remove the cork cell and once again if you observe the cheek cells and the onion peel cell there is one common feature that is a dark dotted structure which is called nucleus which is called nucleus so nucleus first it was observed by felis fontana felis fontana is the person first he observed about the nucleus but this person is unable to give the complete explanation about the nucleus then they came a scientist whose name is robert brown robert brown observed the nucleus in the cells of the orchid leaves in which cell in the epidermal layer in 1831 in 1831 so this is the first person to give the complete explanation about the nucleus and he said that this nucleus only will control all the internal cell or whatever the structures are present inside the cell those cell organs are completely controlled by the nucleus this nucleus will have a layer called nuclear membrane this nuclear membrane will give the protection to the nucleus in the nucleus you can find another dark stain body called nucleolus you can find the nucleolus and a thread like structure called chromatin this chromatin is nothing but the genetic material and is it is helpful in passing the characters from one generation to another generation so once again if you want to see the nucleus very clearly in the living organisms means first let us take the again once again the plants so once again with uh, let us start with the plants so today we discussed about the antony van leeuwenhoek robert hooke and another one is the robert brown and also we have studied about the structure of cells in the onion pea cheek cell and as well as in the cork if you are having the textbook open the textbook read the lesson and underline all the important points and uh, before itself i have given the work also for you to draw the diagrams twice in your rough book okay children thank you let us meet in the next class